I think food justice people are um, really ready to dig in the dirt, if that makes any sense, and kind of get at the questions that we've been afraid to answer. The food is, appears innocent, but yeah. what I argue, and you know, along with many others, is that it's the product of legacies of, of violence and erasure and enslavement, and we need to talk about those stories too. There are lots of folks who work very hard to put the food on our table. And as LaDonna Redmond says, there's never been a just, equitable food system. And so somebody is winning and somebody loses. And it's unfortunate that it's the labor. And really thinking about the food system as colonial and as a tool for colonization and thus oppression, but also therefore thinking about food and agriculture as a tool for liberation and decolonization I think there's a lot of energy around food justice. I think the particularly thinking about the vertical integration of how do we link up um, struggles around food justice and racial disparities, thinking about the ways that race has become more and more a prominent aspect of the ways that we think about food systems and racialization and how do we confront current and past um, injustices. For us, some of the energy around food justice it's this intersection between farm viability and access or equity so that it's not only people with more disposable income that can afford you know, locally produced products. And that, that's what gives me hope, that young people are sort of saying, okay, older generation, we understand the barriers that stood between you and your neighbors and we don't want to replicate that. And instead of a myopic view of what justice looks like, there's a more inclusive view and youth are sort of trying to bring in all those different conversations for a more full conversation on what equity should look like.